Welcome back, fans of all things Disney. One of our subscribers, actually a couple of different subscribers, had asked that I put a video together all about the Run Disney process. So because I've done quite a few races at this point, I am not an expert on running or on Run Disney, but I will just share kind of my experiences with the entire process, going from kind of deciding that you wanna do a Run Disney race all the way through till race weekend. Um, I also have a couple of little pieces that I'll overlay so that you can see some useful tools like the Run Disney website and things like that. So the very first thing that I'm going to suggest when you decide if you want to do a Run Disney race or not is you have to identify what distance of race that you want to run. You know what your fitness level is. You also know what level of challenge you're going to want and how much time you can dedicate towards the training plan. I will tell you this right now, a 5K, um, it sounds like it won't take very much out of you, but it is three miles long. And if you are not used to running or walking three miles at any one uh, time, you definitely want to make sure that you are training even for the 5K. Could you pull it out? Absolutely. Would I recommend it? Absolutely not. You could certainly cause an injury to yourself. So even for that lowest level of the 5K, you really wanna make sure that you're leaving yourself plenty of time to train now, with every one of the Run Disney weekends, they offer a 5K, a 10K, and a half marathon. The only weekend that offers something additional is the marathon weekend, and that's the full 26.2 mile event. That's something for experienced runners or for people that, let's say you've never done a race before and you just decide you want to do the 26.2 miles, you're a beginner, well that's fine, but you have to get on your training. And I'll show you some of the Jeff Galloway training plans right through the Run Disney website, which certainly helps me. Um, he advocates using intervals to kind of help you with your distance. <laughs> Hello, Miss Iris. Um, so you definitely need to pick your distance first. And the reason I say that is this, if you want to do a marathon, well, then your weekend is chosen for you. The only Run Disney event that has a marathon is in January, and it is the full marathon weekend. If, however, you want a 5K, a 10K, or a half, well, you've got other options that you can do. There are four different weekends, and every single one of those weekends has those events or those distances. So once you've decided what you want to do, and let's just say that you want to start off with a 10K, that's what you want to do, then what you need to do is you need to pick the theme of the weekend that you're most interested in. So starting in the calendar year, the very first event is in January, and that is the marathon weekend. That event is themed for Fab Five, right? So Mickey Mouse will typically always be the one that's on your marathon medal. Um, Donald Duck, as far as I could tell just from looking through, Donald Duck tends to be on the half marathon. The 10K tends to be Minnie Mouse. This past year, Oswald made an appearance on the 5K. They do also have some challenges on that marathon weekend. And the one challenge is called the Goofy Challenge, and that is the half marathon on the Saturday followed by the full marathon on that Sunday. So it's back to back Saturday, Sunday running 13.1 and then 26.2. Now, for those of you that are truly insane, like myself, um, and you want to do the dopey challenge, I'm going to attempt it for the very first time this year. And I say attempt because I'm going to put everything I have into it, but I also recognize that it's setting a pretty decent challenge for myself. Um, the dopey challenge, the theme of that medal, of course, is gonna be dopey. Um, that is the 5K on Thursday, 10K on Friday, half marathon on Saturday, followed by the full marathon on Sunday. So it's a ridiculous number of miles. It's a ridiculous number of early mornings, but um, it is certainly a challenge. I would not recommend that for anybody that has never done a run Disney race, or let me take that back. Anybody that's never run over a 10K, I would definitely not recommend the Dopey. People have done it, they've trained for it, and they've accomplished it, and that's great. But you want your first run Disney race to be truly successful and very little stress, so maybe try a run Disney event first. So that's the one in January. If Fab Five is 
they're fighting in the background. It's awesome. And by fighting, that's in air quotes. They're playing. Um, if your preference would be a princess theme, then you want the races in February. And that is the Princess Half Marathon Weekend. And the last few, they have kind of been mixing up the different princesses that are on each of the medals. So it really kind of depends. You never know in advance. Um, I lucked out this year and I finally got a Mulan medal for the 10K. Um, and I've been waiting for her and waiting for her for the last few years. So it all just depends. If you're interested in princess theme, then you want the February race. That does not have a marathon. That It caps out at the half marathon. Um, but if you like the princess theme, that's the one you want. If you're looking for Star Wars, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so if you are looking for Star Wars, that's kind of more your speed. You would much rather have Star Wars themes and princesses. Then you want the race weekend in April. And that this year they switched it up to the Rival Run. They used to do a Star Wars uh, Run Disney event in California and then one here in Florida. But now that California is not doing the races, they have blended the dark side and the light side races to make them the Rival Run run and so that particular event is in April if you're interested in that theme and then the only other weekend that they have is the wine and dine weekend and that is in November it culminates um the Wine and Diner Food and Wine Festival at Epcot. What's really great about that Wine and Dine um, Half Marathon Weekend is they really do play around with the theming of it. Like this past year, they had Mickey Mouse on the Half Marathon and uh, I think it was like Lumiere and I don't know, Cogsworth or something like that on the 10K medal. But what you'll see is they really kind of mix it up. Last year they had passports to kind of go along with that International Food and Wine Festival. So the medals kind of change. It just it just kind of depends. The other thing that's really nice about that particular Run Disney race weekend is they give you a $15 e-gift card with your registration and then you also get entrance into the after hours party at Epcot for the food and wine festival so it is specific only to run Disney participants and um, anybody that maybe they purchased a ticket for that didn't run um, but like family members so if that sounds like something you would be interested in then you definitely want to look at the November um, food and wine half marathon weekend or wine and dine half marathon weekend now they also have virtual races and I know that this particular request has to do more with what to do if you're gonna run one of the events on Disney property but I will mention they do have virtual races so for those of you that you just you the finances won't allow you to get to Disney World or you know you just can't take that amount of time off of work or you just want to try a virtual race first the um, one series that I started with is the 5k series and that starts on June 1st and runs through August 31st and it's one 5k for each of those summer months and it's virtual right so you can kind of decide what course you want to run if you want to run it all at once or if you want to do a mile here two miles there you can certainly do that they also offer a challenge where if you do all three of those 5k virtual races and there is an additional medal just because you happened to run all of them the only other virtual race that they have um, they built in a couple years ago and when the Disneyland in California when those races were canceled so they moved the half marathon from the uh, light side weekend to a virtual run and the reason I think that they chose to do that is because so many people were disappointed that they could no longer get their Kessel Run challenge medal so in order to get that Kessel Run medal you have to do the virtual half marathon where you used to have to go all the way to California to get it. Now you do the virtual half marathon and then you do the half marathon on Disney World property and then that gives you your Kessel Run metal. So for the, it's shaped like the Millennium Falcon. It's awesome. I'm going to get mine this year. I'm so excited for it. So if that's something that you're interested in, that's a virtual half marathon. Same thing. You pick the course. You decide, am I going to run it all at once or am I going to kind of split it up? It's honor system, right? So you don't have to prove your time. You don't have to do any of that. Once you do your registration, you are good to go. You just... The way I look at it is if I'm going to pay for something, I'm going to do it. <laughs> so um, honor system, absolutely. But why shortchange yourself? If you sign up for a virtual half marathon, get out there and do it. Absolutely get out there and do it. So um, once you have decided on your theming and if you want to do an on-site run or if you want to do a virtual run, 
the rest of this is really all for on-site runs. You want to check your exact weekend dates and the registration dates. Run Disney events sell out like that. They become available at a certain time and they are gone. Princess weekend, you can pretty much guarantee that the challenge is going to be gone or at least the 10K or the 5K, they're going to be gone within an hour of them being posted. Now that might be a little bit of hyperbole, my apologies for that, but um, it's not that much of an exaggeration. So you want to know when can you register and get in there. If you're an annual pass holder or a Disney Vacation Club member, they allow us to register about, it used to be a week in advance and now it seems like it's just a couple of days, but you just wanna keep checking those websites to check on those benefits to see when you can in fact register for a run Disney event. But before you know which ones to register for, you have to do the research and the theme and when you can get time off of work and things like that. So make sure that you know well in advance. Don't anticipate that you're going to be able to sign up at the last minute. Yes, it does happen, but it, it can be pretty rare. So make sure that you have planned this out for yourself. So once you have select, selected which one you're going to register for, then you simply go on to the Run Disney website and you hit register. If you do not already have a Run Disney account, it will prompt you to create a Run Disney account. And one of the things that's really great about my Run Disney account, as I'm sure everybody has experienced this, is you can actually, now that Run Disney is running it themselves, you can um, keep track of everything that you have registered for. I had to just go in and double check, make sure I registered for that virtual hat so I get my Kessel Run medal, so excited. Um, but you can also purchase things. You can purchase those um, pre-purchased items like the pin bundles or the race jackets or things like that after the date that you have registered. And that is awesome. That always used to be a real rigmarole to try to get in there and do that when it was a, um, a secondary uh, service provider that was using the system or was allowing you to do the registrations. But now that Run Disney has it, it's so much better. Once you have registered, then you want to stalk that Run Disney website. You want to become so, so, so familiar with that website because not only does it talk to you about the different events, but it also gives you your training plans, the Jeff Galloway training plans, whether you are a beginning runner or you are an experienced runner. And there are so many different training plans that you can pick from. You certainly don't have to use the one that Run Disney has partnered with, with Jeff Galloway, but I will tell you interval running where you you are running a little bit and then walking a little bit and then running and then walking has allowed me to do all of these different races that I've done over the last several years and finish with some strength right, to where I am not knocked out and in need of dire medical attention, right? So they have allowed somebody who is not an athlete, I have the coordination of a dead cat, it is pathetic, but have allowed me, these intervals have allowed me as a non-athlete to be able to participate, to not compete, it's not about compete for me, it's about participate and challenge myself and then to achieve that accomplishment, to accomplish what I set my mind to do. So if you are kind of in the same situation, if you just wanna set a lofty goal for yourself and make sure that you can get it, you might wanna check out that Jeff Galloway plan. Um, that will certainly help you. Now, once your training is well underway and you have your registration, then you need to make your decisions on transportation and hotel and all of that. And those are very specific decisions that are needed for you to make, whether you're driving, whether you're flying, you know, however you want to do that, that works for you. I am going to suggest that if you are driving or flying, you want to make sure that you will have arrived at least a day in advance. So you can get your legs back underneath you, you can walk around a little bit, you can feel really good, you can get used to the different climate here in Florida if you're coming on site. Just please make sure that you give yourself time to get to that expo and get your bibs. The running shirts that are included with the registration, that's all fine and dandy, but your bib is the thing that they will not let you run if you don't have your bib. So you need to make sure that you have time to get your bib, to truly experience the expo, to have fun. This should be a racecation for you, right? So it should be something that you train, 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 train for, and then you're ready and you get right to race weekend. And it's just fun at that point. It should be just fun for you. I will tell you that every um, Disney hotel on property is a, um, a sponsored hotel for the race weekend. So they will provide you with bus transportation 
to the start, to the starting line, and back to your hotel. So you don't have to worry if you're staying on Disney property, which hotel you should stay in. So I hope that was useful. The girls apparently want to be part of the end here. Um, until our next video, bye-bye. <laughs>